as the me decade has become the re decade. Well, 2020 began its look back when on last week's program, when Hugh reported that nostalgia is now more than wistful memories. It's a way of life and it's big business. Need more proof? We have it for you. And you'll love seeing the evidence. Some classic TV shows are making a comeback in the 80s. Now, we're not talking reruns. These shows are being redone. Dick Schaap is our time traveler. Turn the television clock back a quarter of a century, back to 1961. This is CBS. When people perched in front of their sets and watched their favorite shows flicker into their living rooms, their favorite stars flicker into their minds. Now turn the clock forward. I must congratulate you, Mrs. Jeffries. The description of the dress and the back were completely accurate. You missed only one significant detail. This is not a woman. This gentleman is Robert... Perry Hunter. Mason returned to television a couple of months ago. Returned after 19 years in retirement. Returned a little older, a little heavier, perhaps even a little wiser. The days of these theatrics are long since gone. Oh, no, they're not. Perry Mason Returns, a two-hour movie reuniting Raymond Burr as Mason and Barbara Hale as his secretary, Della Street, earned the highest rating of any show on television that week. I Dream of Jeannie made its TV reappearance last fall, after 15 years of being bottled up in syndication. Very and Jeannie, funny. like any good Jeannie, had barely aged. But she had grown up. Listen, you know, you used to be so pliable. I missed that. You were my master, and I wished only to serve you. That, that, that is what Jeannies are made for. But I have been doing this sort of thing since 64 B.C., and I think I am fed up. Just my luck, you get fed up in this century. Barbara Eden's fans clearly are not fed up with Jeannie. When this two-hour TV movie played directly opposite the second game of the World Series last fall, Jeannie came surprisingly close to outscoring both the Royals and the Redbirds in the ratings. I lost my wife. I lost my job. I lost my kids. I even lost my bus ticket. Nothing's changed. I'm still the beaver. Still the Beaver aired in 1983, and Still a Draw finished first in its time slot. The movie inspired by the old series, then inspired a new series, proving there is life after reincarnation. Jerry Mathers and Tony Dow, still playing the brothers, just finished filming 13 new segments of Wally and the Beaver, the Cleavers grown up. I always said growing up was the neatest thing that could happen to a guy. Growing up is a pretty neat thing, Beaver. If you really grow up, and it's all right to look back on the good times you had. <laughs> oh, Andy. Well, this, this could be the beginning of a whole new life for us. You're with In a few months, yeah. Deputy Barney Fife and Sheriff Andy and their sleepy North Carolina community will spring back to life after an 18-year rest. Oh, you finally saw the truth and consequences of that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, Chip. Rolling. Reborn in a two-hour television movie called gone, Return to Mayberry. Hey, go, go. Once again, Andy Griffith and Don Knotts will deal in their own easygoing way with Mayberry Vice. If the thousands of readers of The Bullet, the official newsletter of the Andy Griffith Show Rerun Watchers Association, and the thousands who study these trivia-filled books aimed at Griffith Files, if they are a fair gauge, then the ratings for Return to Mayberry could soar out of sight, high enough to make certain that the current rash of reunion movies, as the revivals are called, turns into an epidemic. There'll probably be another 50 or 60 before they run out. They can't keep going. But for the next three or four years, this phenomenon will continue. Mike Dan is, in a sense, the godfather of this phenomenon. At CBS in the 50s and 60s, 
Dan put on the air dozens of shows that are now candidates to satisfy TV's new obsession with the old. But if Dan is the godfather, Steve White is the reigning Don, the NBC executive who signed up the two-hour rebirths of Mason, Jeannie, and Griffith. We were uh, knocking our brains out trying to come up with 30 movies a year to do. And uh, one of the things uh, uh, I have in my office here is a book of old series. So I was looking through the book one day and I said, hey, there are a lot of great shows that ran for years and years. Uh, their stars are around. Some of the stars are bigger today than when they were on the show. Don't we think that the public would be interested in seeing just a two-hour movie, just one more time, seeing these shows again? Who was the first person you proposed that to? Doing that? With? When you came up with the idea, who did you go to and say, let's do this? Or did you just... Can you do it just like that? Yeah, I, you know, I am basically sort of godlike in my power here, Dick. But I've but... noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> and so White created the reunion movies, which were blessed with good ratings, which meant that they begat more reunion movies. Why were people watching? Barbara Corday's husband dreamed up the genie revival, and she produced it. And I think that we like being reminded of happier times, earlier times. We all love nostalgia. We all look at things from our childhood and say, oh, God, that was great, you know. The shows have become part of uh, people's lives. You know, they're old friends that they remember very well. And I think bringing them back is like having a reunion with an old friend. We look back. It is a reunion not only for the viewers. We sat down together in the courtroom. And it was like you had just erased 25 years of the worst years of your life, and you were 25 years younger, and it was just beautiful. And we started out that day just like it, uh, we had just finished the last show the day before. And it was beautiful. Is it like coming home? Oh, yeah. It was, uh, it was eight years. It was the best time I ever had. The show was based on love. And we were all true to our characters. We would protect those characters at all costs. We would lose a joke or a whole script if we had to, to be sure that we treated the characters with the, with the loyalty that they deserved. It's very difficult to do something that you've done once and you know people like. And, and to go back and do it again um, is a bit frightening. Because what if you don't do it right? And what if you don't look right? <laughs> what if you disappoint that audience that likes what you did, that body of work that you did? Do people actually stop you and ask you to grant wishes? Yes. Did you? Yes. <laughs> of course, I never let my audience down. <laughs> it's, it's funny, I'll take my wife out sometimes and we'll be at a restaurant, say, and we'll be sitting there. And maybe I'll be drinking a glass of wine and people come by, but just in fun, they'll say, now the beaver shouldn't be drinking wine, you should have milk and cookies. How long did it take you to get back into character? About two minutes. I couldn't remember how to do Gomer, and then suddenly, it took me about three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a single Shazam in this whole film. <laughs> well, you slip one in. I only got one golly. <laughs> With Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle, we turn to Mayberry as perhaps the ultimate reunion movie, bringing together not only the original stars, but also one of the original directors, Bob Sweeney, and two of the original writers. Harvey Bullock and Everett Greenbaum. Everett, when you heard that they wanted you to write Return to Mayberry, what was your reaction? Fear. <laughs> and I think along with the fear was, can we come back and uh, bring to life something which was so successful before, are we taking the chance of bringing it back and not being, having the same impetus as before? We didn't want to tarnish an image, if you will, but uh, we, we felt it was so special. Return to Mayberry, like Jeannie and Beaver, and to a lesser extent, Mason, recalls a more innocent time on television, pre-Dallas, pre-Dynasty. There's not a bedroom set in it, no car crashes, no dope, no drugs, no four-letter words, nothing. Are we in trouble? <laughs> Just stay home. It is a throwback to a time when audiences accepted fantasy, accepted a genie popping out of a bottle. Accepted a lawyer who lost only one case in more than 300 episodes. When the gems didn't turn up, Eleanor's gun was taken from Hepner's pocket, put to the back of his head, and he was killed. His body was dumped in the park along with Eleanor's gun. But I didn't kill him. I swear it, I didn't kill him. But your accomplice did. The person who headed the smuggling ring did. Walter Ritchie did. <laughs> 
except at a law enforcement officer who never shot anybody, never even carried a gun. You ready? Let it rip. Except that a father and son who earnestly and sentimentally could talk man to boy. Sometimes at night, I like to try to imagine me being a man, but I just can't figure myself walking around in a big overcoat and having kids being scared of me and all that stuff. Well, I couldn't either when I was your age, Beaver. But I'll tell you something. A man never gets so old that he forgets how it was being a little boy. Audiences were more accepting in the 50s and 60s and more grateful. They got excited because the picture was clear. It was first black and white, and then you really had a hit when you got living color. And when you had something that was made in Hawaii, my goodness, that was terrific. Objective two is argumentative, assuming a fact not in evidence, leading and suggestive, and utterly incompetent, irrelevant, and immaterial. Sustained. Back in the days when Beaver Cleaver was growing up on this street, the audience knew the TV schedule, the predictable schedule. Shows were rarely preempted, and the more successful ones, Genie, Beaver, Griffith, Mason, ran for hundreds of different episodes, all of them repeated endlessly in syndication. The shows were cemented in the public consciousness. I think people just want to know that those people are still alive. I don't think they have to be very good stories. But they have to be faithful to the original in their fashion. When they may make gun smoke, they better have that bar exactly like it was. And that fellow who hobbled around on one leg, he's now been in many other series, his legs work fine. Uh, but he was the assistant sheriff. He was sort of a dopey kind of guy. He didn't think very well. He better limp the same way, because people will know that his foot got better in his old age, and they won't like that. Some shows will not come back. Wanted, dead or alive, died with Steve McQueen. David Jansen is gone, and the fugitive will never be recaptured. And the odds are enormous against Desi ever loving Lucy again. What kind of shows would you not bring back? Mr. Ed. Why not Mr. Ed? The horse is a drunk. <laughs> Hello. I'm Mr. Ed. They may be beating a live horse. A two-hour version of Mr. Ed is under discussion. Of course, of course, and no one can talk to a horse, of course. <laughs> is it possible that they're going too far with bringing back Mr. Ed? I don't, I don't think the original star is available, but who knows? You know what amazes me is that the, uh, this recorded collection of old TV theme music and its success is astonishing. It, it's, it's a hit record, and particularly on college campuses, where the kids weren't born when these TV shows were on the air, but they're listening to the themes. I think I'll go listen to a Mr. Ed tonight. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting how if something steeps long enough, people begin to get values out of it that they may have overlooked at the time that it was new. 25 years ago, in 1961, Newton Minow delivered his vast wasteland speech, and now the wasteland is flowering. It sure is. You know, there, there's historic precedent for that, because the music of Johann Sebastian Bach was not that well taken in his own time, you know. It this may be the time. first time he and Mr. Ed have ever been had operated in the same conversation. Had something in common, <laughs> right. Fascinating. We'll look forward to all those, all those goodies returning. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I was going to say, Dick. Only Hugh would compare <laughs> Bach to Mr. <laughs> <laughs>